Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel. My name is Art Burns, and I'm really happy to be here with you today. Now, normally I use the word excited, you know, and I think I'm still having a little bit of a hard time with that concept of excitement at this point, right, or, or achieving that level of, of you know, uh, arousal in my body, right? Um, as many of you probably heard on the last uh, episode that I recorded, um, I lost my mother uh, about a week ago. Um, well, no, two weeks ago now, I guess, uh, it was, um, uh, Monday, uh, April 24th that I got a, you know, that my wife actually came down, you know, because I was so estranged from my parents, you know, really for necessary reasons, you know, for the last like year and a half, I haven't talked to them. And I, and I told them I needed to have space, you know, in order to heal. And, um, and so I didn't even hear from my father or my sister. I heard from my wife, you know, who got a call from my sister, you know, and, and it was sudden and it was unexpected. And it was, you know, even though the relationship was, you know, even though there was some distance there, it still had a great impact on me, you know, and it still made me really, you know, think about a lot and sort of examine a lot and, and yeah, and, and feel a lot of emotions. And, and, you know, one of the most important things that we can do is to be able to feel our emotions, right? To just feel them fully, just allow them to happen. This is what we talked about, I think, in the last episode a little bit. We touched on it, right? And so while I'm not necessarily excited to do this, you know, I'm not feeling excitement in my body, I'm still feeling the heaviness of grief, you know, at least in moments, you know, um, but I am happy to be here, you know, I'm happy to, you know, to engage in this process and I'm happy especially to try to, you know, help, you know, use this, this, this process that I've gone through, the pain and the suffering and the grief that I'm experiencing to use that to, to help to illustrate some of the points that we talk about in this podcast and YouTube channel. <clears throat> so here I am and I want to, you know, as I've also told you, you know, last week, you know, I went, um, again, not this past week, but a week ago, um, you know, I drove, I wound up spending, um, four and a half days in the car, right? Like, like legitimately, actually even less than that, I think, because I spent a whole day at the house having the funeral and all that. So literally it was like, I mean, the amount of time that I spent in the car was just absolutely just incredible. And one of the things that it gave me, well, it gave me the time to do two really important things, right? Number one, it gave me the, the, the time to really feel my emotions without worrying about anybody else around me, right? I didn't have to worry about explaining that I'm crying hysterically to my children. I didn't have to, you know, explain to my wife how I'm feeling very, you know, anxious right now and, and really, you know, confused and I might be a little impatient and stuff like that, right? I could just be by myself and do that. And I think that's a very positive thing, right? Um, you know, but it also gave me time to reflect, right? Of course, right? I mean, you know, as John Kabat-Zinn talks about the a comic strip in one of his... Uh, <laughs> In one of his books, he says, you know, the comic strip shows a, a person driving alone in a car in a desert landscape, and there's a billboard that says, nothing but your own, you know, haunting thoughts for the next 350 miles, you know. And that's what it's like in the car, you know. Sometimes you just turn off that radio and you just allow yourself to to, to explore, right, and, and reflect. And and one of the things that came out of this, and, and I tried to do a TikTok video just a little while ago on this, and, and I don't think it really, I don't think I hit it. it it's, you know, the, the concept that I want to talk about here is too big for a three minute format, I think. And, and I tried, it's up there, you can check it out. But what I want to talk about today is, is the importance of self-love. Now, self-love is, as, in my opinion, in my experience, it, it's become pretty cliche, you know, it's become one of these sort of, you know, terms like a buzzword, you know, and, and it's like, you know, like other cliches, you know, it, it loses its, its, you know, essential value somehow, right? It seems to become, you know, sort of part of the background, sort of the white noise in our mind, right? When we, you know, we'll see a message online or, you know, on a coffee cup or something, it'll be self-love, you know, and, and, you know, we, we might for a second be like, oh yeah, self-love, cool. And then we move on and go back into whatever it is we were doing. Right. And so 
And so, so like most cliches, you know, there's a really important message or a really important aspect of this, this term, this concept of self-love that gets lost in the overuse, right? That's what cliches are, right? And so I want to explore this idea of self-love, right? Because, you know, as I was, um, you know, after the funeral, you know, I actually, um, wound up really having a very, very impactful and really beautiful, way more beautiful and impactful than I ever would have believed <laughs> before it happened. But this talk that I had with my father, right, was truly, it was honestly, <laughs> ironic to use that word, but, but, but in truth, it was the first time in, in my entire life that I felt the honesty that I felt in this conversation that I had with my father. And afterwards, as I was driving home on the, you know, 30 hour drive home, you know, after the 30 hour drive out, you know, going back home, I, I was, you know, kind of kicking around this idea of honesty, right? And, and how important honesty is, right? You know, when we when we hold something back, and we all have stuff, right? I mean, we all have stuff that we're not proud of. We all have stuff that we're not, um, you know, that we, we're not willing to share with the rest of the world, right? You know, some of this is sexual in, in you know, nature. Some of it is, you know, mistakes that we might have made in the past, things that we did at some point that we were, you know, mortified about doing, and we would never do that now. And it's a source of great, you know, shame and embarrassment, right? <clears throat> You know, we all have that stuff, right? Carl Jung would call this part of our shadow, right? And so, and so, so as we, you know, as we live our lives, right? Whatever's in that shadow, whatever those things are that we're not willing to share with the rest of our, with the rest of the world, like that thing you just thought about, right? <laughs> you know, that becomes a boundary. Right now, not not necessarily. Yes, it becomes a boundary in the outside world. True, yes, for sure. But more importantly, it becomes an internal boundary. Right, it becomes a boundary at which we don't love ourselves past this boundary. Right, we 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 love ourselves up to the edge of this boundary. But ugh, when I think about that thing I did, I don't love myself anymore. Not in that moment. Not not at that point in my mind, I don't love myself anymore. I maybe resent myself. I maybe, um, you know, maybe I, I, I still hold myself to blame for something or, or maybe I still feel like I haven't, you know, you know, really, you know, made amends for the thing, right? I haven't paid the price, whatever that price might be, right? And, and oftentimes, though, when, when we get to that boundary, all we do is we turn away, right? We, we just, oh, my gosh, no, no, no we can't go there. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not going to tell anybody about that thing, right? And it's a reactive thing. We just, we're, because it's a fear, right? We, we're, we're afraid of this thing. We're afraid of what people are going to think of us if they hear about this thing. We're going to be afraid is they still going to accept us. They still going to want to be with us, Right? But this is one of those things where, you know, I've talked about this here on the podcast and YouTube channel a lot in the past, right, is that this, the, we have this sort of dual need in our lives, right? We have a, a biological imperative for authenticity, right? Our authenticity is our gut instinct. It's our intuition. It's so vitally important to us. Right? How many times have you been in your situ in your life? How many times have you looked back and said, "I should have seen the warning signs. I should have seen the red flags about that job or that person or that you know movie that I went to see. I should have known better." That's your that looking back and saying, "I should have known better." What that's saying is that your intuition was not there for you in that moment, or you weren't able to listen to it, right? And so, so this intuition is so vitally important in, in, in the ability to steer ourselves through our lives and keep ourselves well and safe and happy. But there's another biological imperative that is equally as important as the authenticity, and this is the, the imperative for connection to others. Now, 
in essence, this connection doesn't even have to necessarily be other human beings. It can just be other mammals, right? But you need some reciprocal affection and, 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 and mutual care, right? So this could certainly be a dog or a cat or a guinea pig, right? Mouse, whatever, but not reptiles. <laughs> reptiles are incapable of reciprocating to you. Right? They do not possess the, the, the emotional aspect of that mind. And so therefore, they don't need to connect to you. Right? But your cat needs that connection just as much as you do. Okay? So, so if you got a cat or a dog, they work for this. Okay? And the, and the reason why the cat or dog seems it's even you know, more you know, sort of uh, available sometimes right, is because there's a, 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 con a conflict, a, a sort of tension between the need for connection and the need for authenticity. And what happens is in, in many, many circumstances, we worry that if that person knew all about us, really knew this thing that we keep in the back of our mind, hidden in the shadow, if they knew that about us, they would not accept us. They would not allow this connection to happen. So therefore, what we do is we sacrifice our authenticity for the sake of the connection. We have to do it. It's, it's the only choice that we have in most circumstances, right? So it doesn't, it's nothing wrong with you having done this. I've done this. You've done this. Everyone's done this on some level at some point in their lives, okay? So this is not something that you've messed up, okay? But it's important that we get back to that authenticity. That is really, really important. And the only way to get back to that authenticity is to be able to see all of that stuff that's in there. Now, again, now here's where I want to pause and I want to say that I am not a licensed therapist, right? And, and if there are, you know, traumatic things that we're talking about, yes, you should be in the care of a therapist or a coach or, or someone who can help you to guide you through this. Because when it comes to trauma, there's a, a, a different way that your brain is working, right? And so, and so you're not going to be able to see it the same way, right? So, so it's important that you seek help if you, if you feel like you need, if it feels overwhelming, seek help. And that help could be me, right? Just, so, you know, call, email me, book a little call with me, a 45 minute call. The, the link is in the description, right? <clears throat> and that the four, one 45 minute session, which is totally free, by the way, could be enough for you. Okay, but, but really don't try to do it on your own if it feels shaky, if it feels overwhelming, okay? Don't try to do it on your own because it can be very dangerous, okay? Promise? All right. All right. But for, for, for those of us who feel, and, and as you approach your trauma, it doesn't mean that you can never get this. You will, right? And as you start to look, as you start to inquire, as you start to shine a light into that shadow, you become more able to go further and further and deeper into the shadow. Now, the important thing that we can do in this, in this time, in this practice, is to practice self-compassion, right? Self-compassion becomes almost like a, like a bodyguard that you bring into that shadow, right? I always like to look at it that the bodyguard started out as a bouncer, right? The guy that doesn't let you into that shadow, right? No, 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 you don't want to go here. You do not like this subject. Stay out. Right. But when I hold myself in compassion and say that even the things that I've done wrong in my life, it's OK. I did wrong because I thought that that's what I needed to do. And I was operating from a place of suffering. Right. When I can notice that suffering in self-compassion, that bouncer becomes a bodyguard. He, he says, OK, you I'll walk you in. Let, let's go. Let's take it slow and let's go in there. And that's a really beautiful point, right? But, but the thing that really facilitates this, the thing that really makes this possible, really becomes honesty, right? It's only when we can be fully and completely 100% honest 
with ourselves about ourselves. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to tell anybody else about that thing, right? You can still hold that, that as your secret, but you have to be honest with yourself about it, right? You have to just look at it without any you know, justifying thoughts without any, you know, uh, sort of shielding or diffusing kind of ways to make it feel like it wasn't so bad, right? You got to look at it. You got to be able to face it really fully and honestly. Now, the trick here is in order to achieve that honesty, and this is really important, in order to achieve that honesty, you got to be able to forgive yourself for what it is that you're being dishonest about. It's got to start with a, a sense of forgiveness. Now, as all of you know, I talk about forgiveness here in this space a lot. Because really, again, forgiveness is what allows us to be honest. And honesty is what allows us to be present with it. Whether that's with ourselves or with others, our jobs, our, our cars, whatever it is, right? We have to be, if we're, if we're going to be present with it, we got to be honest with it. Otherwise, it's not really present, right? It's uh, kind of present, but not uh, you know, stick this one behind, that sh the, behind the curtain, right? So how do we become honest with ourselves, <laughs> right? I don't know if I said this already. I'm sorry. My mind's a little uh, foggy here still. But the way that we become honest with ourselves is by forgiving ourselves, forgiving that thing that we believe is so horrendous that we can't share with anybody else. Now, again, as I said a few moments ago, I'm sure I said this a few moments ago, is that we, we don't have to share it with the rest of the world right? Whether we've forgiven it or be honest about it, whatever, we can still keep that as our secret for the rest of the world, right? That's okay. You don't have to expose it because that can be very scary no matter what, how you've forgiven it, right? But again, you got to be honest with yourself about it. And in order to be honest about it, you got to forgive it. Now, what is forgiveness? As I said, I know I'm repeating myself. I really, I'm sorry, folks. But, um, but uh, you know, again, 60 hours of driving at 75 miles an hour, it does things to your brain, and I'm still now getting over it. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it's only been less than a week since I've been back. So, uh, so anyway, um, how you know, forgiveness is something I talk about a lot because forgiveness is again just so important, right? Now. A lot of people feel that forgiveness is, you know, is like, you know, calling somebody up and saying, hey, I forgive you for what you did, right? And in a lot of ways, that feels like opening yourself up for them to do it again. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. But that's the thing. Forgiveness does not require that. Forgiveness is not about that other person. Forgiveness is just for yourself, right? And forgiveness is ultimately really nothing more than the sort of the the far you know superlative version of acceptance that's all it is right forgiveness is just saying that you know i did this thing right <laughs> i don't like what i did i'm not it's not like i'm happy about it and and i still feel the pain of what i did and the pain that i caused others or whatever <clears throat> but forgiveness is saying that I know that there's nothing I can do to change it. No amount of beating myself up or beating somebody else up or, or, or harboring this anger or resentment for myself or someone else, none of that is going to change what happened. That's what forgiveness is. As Jack Cornfield says, forgiveness is giving up all hope for a better past. Twice I've re referenced Jack Cornfield in this episode. That's pretty cool. That's always a good day. And so, so when we when we talk about this forgiveness, though, right? When we when we you know enter into this space of of just accepting what it is that I did, 
And just, you know, and again, it's not to say that it didn't hurt. It's not to say that it's okay that it happened. It's not to say that it can ever happen again. And it's also not to say that maybe you owe some contrition over this, right? Maybe you owe a debt of, of apology or, or amends in certain way. That could be something for yourself or for somebody else too, right? But forgiveness exists outside of that. Right, that that's subjective. That's that's who knows what what the the situation truly calls for in that. But forgiveness is just for you again to accept that it happened, and that nothing in the world could make it happen any differently because it's already happened. Right now. It's really important to look at forgiveness not as a monolithic digital kind of thing, digital in the sense of either it's on or off, right? It's one or it's zero, right? It's forgiven or it's not forgiven, right? It's much more complex than that. The way I, I illustrated this to a client recently is I, I said, picture yourself painting a wall in your home right? You put that first coat on and it looks so beautiful and shiny and it's so you look so good, right? Then you go and you go in the kitchen, you get a drink of water and you come back and you look at the wall again. Now it's dried a little bit. And now you see, oh my gosh, it looks patchy. It looks splotchy. It looks terrible. So what do you do? Do you just tear down the wall? Do you move out? Do you just never look at that wall again? No, of course not. What you do is you take the roller and you put on another coat of paint. And yes, you come back, a, you know, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, and even that might still look a little bit splotchy. Maybe you see some of the old color coming through still in certain spots. So what do you do? You put on another coat of paint. So forgiveness, the process of forgiveness is just like that. You just, because forgiveness is very easy. You just forgive. You just accept. You just say, okay, I forgive it, <laughs> Right. And in the beginning, that might last like two seconds. <laughs> and then you just do it again. And then every time you do that, it, it gives you a little bit more. So maybe it goes from two seconds to five minutes, right? And it goes from five minutes to 10 minutes, and 10 minutes to an hour, hour to two hours, two hours to a whole day. A whole day to three days that you didn't blame yourself for this thing. But then here you are on the third day up. There we are. We're back in this unforgiveness. Well, just forgive again, right? And don't worry about how many times it takes to forgive yourself on something, okay? Some things you're going to be working for the rest of your life to forgive yourself, and that's okay because the process of forgiveness is enriching. It's, it's, it, it, it inspires health. And the more we do it, the more we become comfortable with looking at it with that honesty. And once we're truly honest with ourselves, and once we've truly forgiven whatever it is that we've done, it doesn't mean that we don't have to keep forgiving it, but once we've, we've truly connected with that essence of acceptance and forgiveness, now we're free to love ourselves. Because there's nothing more that's unlovable. Because we've already done the work to forgive ourselves. And now the important thing about the, the love for ourselves, right? Getting back to that connection and um, authenticity <clears throat> is that if I love myself, and this is what, was, what I was thinking about on the, on the ride. And actually, <clears throat> I think this one was actually on the ride out before even the funeral. And so it was a, a recurring theme, if you will. But it occurred to me that if I love myself as much or more than I love anybody else, right? In other words, and the way it kind of occurred to me is if I think of myself as the most amazing, most interesting, most cool, most awesome person in the entire world, which I am, right? And so are you, right? We all are. And if I think of myself, if I see myself in that way, well, then I don't need to change myself to be connected with this specific person because I have faith there that, that I can just be me and the right people are going to come. I'll find the right people. I can be patient. I don't have to be afraid. Oh, my gosh, am I going to find connection with this person? No, no, it's okay. Hey, if we're not going to jive, that's cool. 
I got uh, there's seven and a half billion other people in the world. I guarantee you, you're gonna find plenty of them who do see you the same way you see yourself. And that's really what we're doing, right? Those people who are not accepting of us, they're seeing us the same way we're seeing ourselves in a lot of ways. And, and that's not acceptable. And so therefore we have to change it. As I said before, we got to like tell a joke. We got to work harder so everybody can count on us. They don't have to like us. They count on us. I make them money. Of course they're going to connect to me. That's not authentic. And so, so again, it really comes down to, again, honesty through forgiveness, which then just gives ourselves the most loving feeling for ourselves that there could ever be. It's amazing, folks. It's amazing. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to put on my not quite as crooked glass. <laughs> See, my, my head is not this crooked, I promise you. Um, yeah, okay, I have a few minutes here. I want to share something really um, very heavy with you, okay? And, and just in, I'm doing this for the purpose of showing you that I'm not out here just talking the talk of forgiveness, okay? I have walked the walk, and I continue to walk the walk. I have two creatures, two essences in my life for whom I was responsible for their death, at least partially on one of them, at least my belief. One of them, no doubt. My dog, Willie, who was about 11 years old at the time, 9, 11, something like that. I mean, this guy was my, I mean, he was like part of me. My dog, Willie, I loved that guy so much. He was a little cockapoo with a big heart. And he, one time he had a, you know, we had another dog named Patsy who the two of them got, got attacked by these 120 pound German shepherds. And Willie stood his ground. He was, you know, protecting his little friend Patsy and he almost died from it. They had to do this like surgery, like he punctured his, uh, his body cavity or his, uh, you know, whatever that, that chest cavity is, right? It almost died just being such an awesome little dude. Well, there was a time where I was, you know, back in the days where I was really overstressed all the time. And I was so worried about what's somebody going to think about me and how, you know, needing these connections to others because I felt none of that naturally. And I had a banjo lesson, <laughs> a freaking banjo lesson. I don't even play that. I sold my banjo like two years ago. I don't even play anymore. Just goes to show how unimportant this thing was. But I was running late to my banjo lesson. And I was so worried about, you know, this person who was also kind of a friend, you know, judging me and, and finding me to be unworthy of acceptance and connection. Of course, it's not consciously what I was thinking, but that's what I was worried about. That's what was driving my nervous system sympathetic response. And I was in such a hurry that I backed out of my driveway, not even like nothing else was happening in the world except me in this car and getting to my banjo lesson. And my little dog, Willie, was, was chilling out underneath the back of the car. I ran him over. I killed him. So that has been something that forgiving myself for that has been extraordinarily difficult extraordinarily difficult. And there were times where I thought I could never forgive myself for that. But I have. And it doesn't mean that sometimes it pops up and I think, oh my gosh, Willie, I'm so sorry I did that to you. And it still hurts. It still causes me undescribable pain and, 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 and just grief and shame. And I have to forgive myself again and again and again and again. But I do. This is the first time I've said this to anybody in the world, right? And the other person is my mother. I truly believe that, and believe me, driving out there, I mean, I was, oh my gosh, this was a difficult thing to, to grapple with, right? My mother suffered from dementia. And every time that my father talked to her, she asked, is Arthur coming? Is he on his way? When am I going to see Arthur? And for a year, for over a year, I cut the woman off because I needed to tend to myself. It was the hardest decision I've ever made for myself. And 
you know, when people are grappling with dementia, you know, having someone who you love is a very, very helpful thing. So I could, you know, that's why it's, it's debatable to say, like, I caused her to get less well and ultimately to, to succumb to her illness, but I certainly didn't help, right? Now, again, it's a decision I would make again. I would do the same thing, right? But man, is it hard to forgive myself for that. That's really, really a hard one. But you know what? I got to do it. I got to do it. And even, even though I, you know, again, this is like I've only put the first coat of paint on that wall. And I got like 10 or 50 or 100 more coats that I got to put on it before I'm done with this process. But even just starting the process, I'm already able to connect to that love for myself. I'm already to say, already able to say, even even in the presence of this harrowing feeling of what I did to this woman, no matter what she did to me, she didn't deserve this, and I would never want somebody to do this to me. But even though I did that, I can still love myself. I still see myself as the most amazing person in the world. Because honestly, I had the bravery to do this. Because if I hadn't done it, I... I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't have the sense, the, the level of well-being that I have right now. And so this is where it becomes very complex and very nuanced and very non-dualistic is how we got to look at it. It's neither this nor this, but it's this and that. Okay? So anyway, I think that's all I want to say today. I hope you got what I was saying today. I hope it was okay that I shared. I feel like I maybe overshared a little bit, but I know that you don't. I, I, I'm, I have faith that you don't mind. All right. And, but if you do mind, it's okay because I've already forgiven myself for that. All right. If you want help forgiving yourself for something, Okay, because again, I mean, you can be honest with me. I just told you about two of the most important creatures to ever come into my life. And I, you know, basically I feel that I killed both of them or contributed to their death. So, so there's nothing you can tell me that I don't blame myself just as much, right? So, so there's nothing you could tell me that could outdo that in my mind, right? So consider me somebody who you can confide in. If there's something in your past that you find like, I cannot forgive this, right? Let's talk because I can help you to figure out how to forgive that, okay? Because again, it's best looked at as a simple process, just like rolling paint onto a wall, okay? So if you want to learn how to paint with me, let me know, okay? There's a link in the description for a free coaching session that's already in your name. All you got to do is claim it, all right? There's a couple other links that you need down there, and uh, I wish you well, and uh, I'll probably be back in a few days because tomorrow I've got a ton of meetings set up, and um, so I don't think I'll have time to do social media, um, you know, other than maybe a little TikTok, maybe, but probably not even that, um, but if you want to find me on TikTok and Instagram, those links are in the description too. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I truly appreciate, I truly appreciate the connection that we have to each other, so thank you. Take care, everybody.